Welcome to a first ride review. This time I'm riding a bike I actually rode two or three years ago. So it's sort of a first ride review, but I have ridden this machine a few years ago, and it's been updated and changed a little bit since I last rode it. So I'm still gonna call this a first ride review. This is the 2022 Honda CBR 1000R Black Edition. Now this is based on the old 2006 to 2007 Fireblade engine. So that's the same engine, more or less, as what I had in my Beastie project. So that's a proven unit, a bit like the GSXR with its K, you know, its K5 engine. This bike has got a the X Honda, you know, superbike engine in it, retuned, obviously. A few changes happened in all that time, but that's a really, really lovely power plant. Single-sided swinging arm. On the black edition, you've got things like the full black exhaust. You've got diamond-coated fork stanchions. So everything's black. It's a really, really lovely looking machine. Little fly screen, all the rest of it, etc. So we're gonna go out for a first ride. Um, I've got this bike for about a month, actually. I've got this bike for about three weeks, almost four weeks, so. I'm going to do a first ride today and then we're going to follow up with another video on how I'm getting on with this machine because, you know, this is be almost like a bit of a long-term test really. So I'm going to take this out in different conditions, blah de blah But if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea and Chopsy, roll the intro. <laughs> The nice little features of this machine it's got like the you know the diamond cut spokes on the wheels and the same as the, at the front as well a little diamond cut you know little details look here that little cbr on like this piece here or billet and then on the uh, the top triple clamp you've got another cbr with billet billet piece there so there's some nice details on this machine this black version costs, I think it's 13,300, something like that. It's about 1,500 quid more than the standard CB1000. So these machines are reasonably priced naked. But the big question is, what does it ride like? Let's jump aboard. First thing you notice is it's, the bike's been updated with a nice little five inch TFT. And I really like the layout there. You've got like an analog rev counter, fuel gauge, speed you know, sport, what mode you're in, and some fuel consumption figures, you know, proper proper fuel gauge. So that's nice, you know, the, the last one I rode had a funny light which changed colour, and I couldn't work out what it was for. You know, whether it was, I don't know what it was for, it wasn't a shift light, but this is just done away with all that. Oh, a nice amount of grunt. Obviously this motor made about 175 horsepower when it was in the Fireblade, it makes 143 horsepower in this. So it's obviously detuned or retuned, let's call it, retuned for more grunt. I think it's also got self-canceling indicators as well. Let's just test that a moment, a moment longer. Yeah, self-canceling indicators. One of the standout features with the new Fireblade was how smooth that engine was. And this is the same, it's very smooth quick shifter and blipper is like butter you know you can find neutral it's a really really smooth engine and that's sort of what you want on a road bike isn't it and you've got beautiful manners around town the fuel that i've got it in sport mode as you can see massive sport on the dashboard there and the fueling even in sport you know it's nice and soft it's, it's not there's no issues with snatchiness you know everything is just really nice and easy to use the ergonomics on the bike is really comfortable i'm six foot two 20 stone you know and, it, and it's comfortable the bars are at a really nice height for me the seat feels a little bit low the only slight criticism would be the pegs feel high or the seat feels low i think it's the seat feels low because it's quite a tight quite a tight position on your legs you know for a naked it's it's quite a tight one it's just it's just it's sort of a similar leg position to like the tuono you know quite an aggressive naked position i've got a little bit of weight on my arm so you know it's 
it, there's an aggressive naked and there's a really comfortable naked. I say this was in the middle. I'm not sat completely bolt upright. I've got a little bit of weight over the front. It's a nice position. It's, it's, it's a really nice position. But I just think my, the seat feels a bit low. So my legs feel a little bit cramped and I'm 6'2". But, you know, if you're a bit shorter, you may not notice that. But uh, I fancy the, the foot pegs are moderately high for a comfortable naked machine. <laughs> Right, let's give it a little bit in the corners. This could be the only bit of tri road we get. One thing I'm noticing is the suspension. As I say, I am 20 stone, so I'm a big old unit, but it's quite a soft setup. It feels quite wallery, 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 wallery in the rear. It has a little bit of movement in the rear. So it's got a little bit of movement in the suspension, you know, not nothing, nothing outrageous and it is fully adjustable so it could be what i'll do i'll wind a little bit more preload into it to firm it up a little bit because it does feel a little bit soft but I mean, it feels really comfortable i mean it's just absorbing all of the bumps i think the suspension even i can play with it but i don't think it will make a huge difference i think it's just one of those setups which is set up to be be comfortable and smooth you know and just glide over the tarmac i can still feel the texture of the road but I can see it's just a little bit wallowy, a little bit bouncy. I'll try a bit more preload in it for the next ride and I'll report back and see what it's like. But um, first impressions is it's set for comfort rather than performance. The brakes are nice, they're very progressive. There's plenty of bite there. There's not too much initial bite, but then they come in quite strong. Very, very nice brakes. I like the feel of that front end when you're on the brakes. It's nice, but it's a little bit fork dive, and then again, that comes down, I think, to the suspension bit. A little bit soft, so we're, we're trying to sort that. It weighs 214 kilos fully fueled, and it's got a 16 litre fuel tank. So direction changes aren't too bad. I mean, it, 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 it's not the lightest bike I've ever ridden. You know, but it, it does change direction fine. You know, you put a bit of counter steering in and it and it will change direction really quickly. But, I, you know, I think it's definitely, it doesn't feel like you're on the nose. It doesn't feel like the Super Duke. You know, you're sat over the front, you're on the nose. It's You can guide it wherever you want it to go. It feels a little bit more relaxed than that. And I think that's what Honda are targeting here. You know, they've got a very refined, smooth engine. And they're, and they're making this more of a roadster. I mean, they call this the Neo-Caf, you know, look, but it's, it's got a roadster feel to it. I don't, it's not trying to be a super naked, you know, it's not pushing the 180, 200 horsepower power figures. It's 143, it's sensible power for a one liter engine. It's a roadster. This is a smooth, comfortable roadster. such a smooth engine such a smooth ride you know it's just it's just a lovely place to be to be honest got that good bit of drive you know where that engine's been retuned you've got power you know just after 2000 revs you've got a good initial pickup there i think when i originally rode this bike i, I complained that it was too high a geared I complain that, you know, Honda tend to do this quite a lot. They sort of gear their bikes up and make them quite tall on the gearing. It feels like they've addressed that. Oh! <laughs> yeah, it feels like they've addressed that. I think this has been re-geared since that initial version I tried. It definitely feels punchy enough, this. Certainly for these conditions and these roads it does anyway. 104 newton meters of torque so you know pretty respectable torque levels for uh, an inline four let's chuck it around this little section <laughs> that blipper's nice yeah direction changes are decent yeah, it's very nice. It's nice. I mean, it's it's if you're going to go ultimate speed fest, yeah, the suspension firmness 
is holding it back a little bit I'd say but again you know this isn't a super naked this is a roadster and I will have a tweak I will have a fiddle with the twiddlies and, and see if I can improve it for the next ride first gear not even full revs Oh, I do like that blipper and quick shifter. That's really nice. Really smooth. Right, let's have a look. It's a little bit wet, so let's go a little bit easy. Yeah, we can't do too much here. Evening. I've got it in quite a high gear and it's still pulling quite nice but yeah it's a bit too wet to do anything but I could tell it's you know it's a roadster it's it's not a full-on sports naked this because of that suspension is a bit softer but I'll have a play with that might be able to improve it the seat feels quite locked in you know and there's not a huge amount of space to move back I can actually feel the very back of the uh, like the pillion seat cover with the with the tail of the bum so I'm sort of locked into the seat a little bit so perhaps not as much room seating space as some other bikes and it actually feels quite a thin seat as well not very wide when I say thin I mean width you know it's not a particularly wide seat when you've got a bum as big as mine you know I'm using all of this seat and I need a bit more I'm hang I'm hanging over the seat a little bit so the seat's not massive so perhaps you know it's not the best bike for a taller rider because or a bigger rider because of that slightly small seat and and the leg position you know i think uh, it may suit us a, a shorter rider a smaller rider slightly better maybe it's not the most comfortable naked i've ridden for a taller guy slightly faster corner sing out the seat a little bit It's just quite nice around there. Down on the quick shifter. Right, let's see how it pulls. Let's get it into fourth gear. 30 miles an hour in fourth gear. That's just doing just over 2,000 revs. 60. So that's nice, isn't it? So it's got a good bit of drive. That The retuning they've done works really well on here. The earlier version of this bike definitely felt more lethargic than this. This is much more peppy. Nice little uh, Porsche. Was it a Taycan? What do they call this? A Taycan, isn't it? Turbo S. Yeah, that's nice. Drag race. Left-hander. Out of the seat. There's a little bit of that, that suspension. I think it is suspension. I don't think it's chassis flex. I think it's just a bit of suspension flex. I mean, maybe the chassis isn't the firmest thing on this. Maybe that's part of the problem. Evening. It, maybe it's not the suspension, which is a bit soft. Maybe there's a little bit of flex in the chassis. Um, yeah, I'll have a good tweak with the suspension and see if it's sort of chassis flex. I mean, this isn't the Super Naked Bar, I repeat myself. This is a, a roadster, you know, a classic neo calf you know retro-esque roadster so you know it's not claiming to be a super naked it's not claiming to be a super duke a torono but the yeah so I, i'm gonna have a play with the suspension see if i can improve it because maybe you do want this bike to perform a little bit better around the twisty so we, we do what we can with it i'll have a twiddle i'll get my spanners out if i was to have this running at its optimum setup you know suspension setup i'd, I'd have to change the uh, the springs I think. Well I'll have a play around with it, chassis, suspension, we'll see if we can just make it a little bit more sporty feeling but what you've got standard is just a really nice comfortable ride you know and if and perhaps if you want a more sporty ride you know you, you, you get this you get the super nakeds this is just makes a very comfortable lovely road bike 
so there we go the CB1000R this is my first ride review video I will do another follow up on this bike once I've lived with it a little bit longer like I say I've got this for another three weeks so uh, I'm going to get out on this as much as possible and I'll, I'll bring you back and let you know what my full conclusions are of this machine first impressions is it's a really nice machine it's definitely improved from that version I tried sort of three years ago the first iteration of this Neo Caf bike that was this is much more peppy than that the gearing's been changed I love this black this black uh, edition with all these black highlights or, or low lights we call them it's really nice it, it looks beautiful feels lovely amazing quality and I say 13,300 it's not breaking the bank you know like some of the other certainly special edition naked so uh, so yeah, join me again in a few weeks' time and I'll give him a final verdict of this machine. I'll just spend a little bit more time living with her. But thanks for watching, guys, as always, and I'll see you in the next one.